help me. Good morning. Once again, my name is Conrad Derps. This is video four of uh, some of the videos that I'm currently making with regards to the Boer goats here in South Africa. What I would like to discuss today are teeth and specifically the amounts of teeth or the amounts of teeth that goats have at what different ages. And it's very, very important to have it like that or to understand the whole thing about the teeth because when you, for example, for shows, we do have sometimes people that like to have shows, but when they have their shows, what they do is uh, they class the animals in the different ages, like there's so many months or so many months or so many years. We, uh, we do not do that. It goes about the teeth of the animal, which, which otherwise what we're saying is that physiologically, the animals are of the same age. And, and you have a better chance because of that to be able to judge them or to look at them to know their growth and know what you're getting yourself into when you breed with these things. Now let's look at the teeth over here. Yeah, we have the different teeth. Look at the first one over here. This is a lamb. All the teeth are all the same size. It's still a very young animal. So all this is what we call of course milk tooth or milk teeth. If you look at the next picture, this is an animal that is very close to a year, over a year sometimes, and it's got two new teeth. It has shed the milk tooth. All the other milk tooth are still there, and this animal is now a two tooth. And it's very easy to see in the mouth of an animal if you look at the animal. Obviously, as you well know, for those of you who do not know, sheep and goats does not have uh, teeth on the, on the upper jaw. They have teeth, only teeth on the lower jaw. Next one, look at that. This is a four tooth. There's one, two, three, four teeth of the main. They've shed the milk tooth and there's still, as you can see on the sides, some milk tooth left. So that's a four tooth. All right. Next one, a much older animal now. This is around about two years, two and a half years, three years around about there. Your animal has got a six tooth. There's one, two, three to the side, one, two, three to the side. And there you can still see the little milk tooth at the back. That is very clearly visible. That is a six tooth animal. You're much older animal now, a four, uh, um, eight tooth, uh, shed all the milk tooth and the mouth is full. We sometimes in Afrikaans say a full back, which means a full mouth. Um, there you can clearly see that no more milk tooth then. Uh, and, and you also can see this, normally this animals are much larger, much bigger, much grown. This of course is teeth that's been used a lot, broken, shed, and, and we have what we do do in South Africa, if sometimes you get like this teeth out, or the animal has shed some tooth, uh, some teeth, but it didn't grow new teeth. The, uh, or they didn't shed at all or whatever and, and you have long tooth and short tooth and it, it doesn't look fine then we, we, we call such an animal as actually cult we, we do not accept that animal or that animal cannot go through and be, uh, be um, judged as a, as a stud animal um, and then of course you have if you look at this, this is not just an animal that has really been very, very old. The teeth is very, very used up and so on. So that is, in short, just what teeth look, look like. Now, something that I would like to show you today that, and please, this is not supported by any veterinary services, uh, um, research or stuff that has been done. This is what I have found on my farm which I sort of looked at and it is working for me. It's specifically working for me. So whatever I'm going to show you now, if I'm wrong or it's not the right thing, then it's on me. But this is what, what's happened to me. I was on holiday a while, came back, this is about, took about two years ago, came back and some of my big animals, the, the males, the bucks, were in a very bad shape. They were thin. It looks like where they were sick. They weren't eating well. And I looked at them and looked into them and I realized they're not eating. And then I realized, but they cannot, they cannot eat uh, well simply because the back molders of the animals uh, was all rickety. It was at sharp ends. And as we all know, for, for animals to be able to eat properly or the, to chew properly, the molars must be flat on the top. 
It must be able to do this, to slide over each other so that they can actually eat the, eat the, uh, the, the food. Now look at this. If you look at a jaw that is genetically correct, and this is where some arguments come in about a thing being genetically correct or not, all right? Sometimes, uh, if you can bring that camera on to me here just for a moment, sometimes you find, or, or when we look at animals and we judge animals, we have some animals that has been rejected because the lower jaw is too long or the upper jaw is too short because of a genetic problem. But there are times, and this is what I'm looking at, where an animal did not actually, was not born, or has not, uh, genetically doesn't have a longer jaw or a shorter jaw. It's because of wrong feeding that that happened. That that happened. Now look at this. If you look at the genetically correct jaw, and please excuse the writing in here, that's all done in Afrikaans with a presentation that I did. I did this drawings by hand myself. Look at that jaw. There's the upper jaw, here's the lower jaw. Very important, genetically correct. Look at the molars, they're all very specifically lined up. The top jaw and the lower jaw are properly lined up. Your top jaw in the front comes down to the front, and the lower jaw comes up, there's the front teeth, and it fits snug and neat and nice there. With other words, the animal can, the animal can bite the grass, put it up and pull it out, or cut it off to eat it. So this jaw is perfect. That's a genetically correct jaw. Why do I say that? Because if I lift up the lip on the side and I check at molars at the back, I can actually see that they are in line. They're correct. Now, let's look at the next picture. If you look at this picture, I've drawn the same thing, but look at that. This one is genetically incorrect. Why do I say that? Because look at my molars. They still the top and the lower jaw. They're still perfectly in line. Yet, for some reason, the lower jaw has grown much longer than the top jaw. And this causes difficult for animal, especially, remember what we always say, an animal must be functional. Animal must be functional, so if the animal goes out into the field, she must be able to eat properly. Now look at that. Is he going to be able to eat properly with that jaw? No, he cannot, because he cannot get hold of the grass properly. And just for the, for the record, obviously, you can sometimes find that the lower jaw is shorter and the top jaw is longer, which is also genetically incorrect. But why do I say it's incorrect? Because I find that the teeth, the molars are still in line. Still perfect. And look at them, they're flat. On top, all of them are flat. That is because the animal using the, the jaw properly, right? Now let's go look at the third picture. This is the one which I say once again, please excuse all this. Uh, this writing is in Afrikaans. I think the Dutch people, you're going to understand this. But look at this jaw. What I'm saying and what I've found is that because our animals eat a lot of, um, if you can bring that up here, if they, because our animals eat a lot of soft food, soft alpha alpha, soft pellets, they, especially now the big buck, the males, when they go out into the fields, when, when oh, well, not into the fields, pardon me, they're not going out into the fields, they, yeah, in the, in, in the corrals. They, we do not get, let those expensive animals really go out. And we look after them and we sort of treat them and pamper them. And they're in here. The teeth do not get enough exercise out in the fields to really work on, on rough stuff. And because of that, this teeth starts growing in some unnatural ways. Now look at this, if we go in onto the picture, look at what I'm saying, what is happening. All these teeth starting making this sharp edges and sharp points and all of that. And this is what I found with my animals at that time. What happens now is the lower jaw, because of the teeth being raggedy and edgy, they start pushing each other and this actually takes a very natural jaw that was genetically correct before and it starts pushing the lower jaw forward or it can do it backwards depending on, on what's happening here and you sit with an animal first of all 
that cannot, if you bring an animal that cannot chew because all this teeth is raggedy like that, the molars cannot do that, and this guy literally die of hunger. And then when I started talking to a lot of other boer goat farmers, they had the same problem. And some of them said to me, yes, we actually had goats here that died of hunger and we did not understand why. It is because of that. That is what it is. So what did I do? Now look at, if you look at this photo that I've taken at the time of one of the males, and hopefully you're going to see this on the camera, be able to. Look at that teeth. Look how sharp and edgy they are. And it, it just, the animal cannot chew like this. So what does is, what is this poor buck do? And what I've noticed with him and why I thought there was a problem was that they were standing like this and instead of using their jaws like that, I saw them doing this. They were trying to eat like that and they just couldn't get the food into their mouths. So what did we do? I got myself uh, the, a dentist, uh, a horse dentist, which the guy says, well, it's very, very natural. In, in the horse industry, we've been doing this for ages. Because horses has got exactly the same problem. They're unstable the whole day, especially your, your race horses and animals like that. They don't go out into the pastures. They have the same problem. So I had this guy come in and he did this teeth for me. He put the animals on, a, on a, some light anesthetics. We have, we have the... Uh, the um, veterinarian standing right next to him all the time the horse dentist is there he put this animal in clamps they open the mouse as you can see there's a, a whole clamp system with which they've done it and and they they he just simply did the teeth for me now and this is video five i i, I am going to put video four and video five onto the web at the same time Please have a look at video five and you will actually see how he does it and what happens there. And if you have this problem, hopefully you will be able to sort that problem as well and still have that older animals of yours that are still perfect to breed with, but they're just getting very, very thin. You're going to keep them nice and healthy. Thank you very much. Cardinal Apps.